when we are too well pleased with ourselves. When our dreams have become true because we dreamt too little. When we have arrived in safety because we have sailed too close to the shore. Disturb us, Lord, when uh, with the abundance of things we possess, we have lost the thirst for the water of life. When having fallen in love with time, we have ceased to dream of eternity. And in our efforts to build a new earth, we have allowed our vision for a new heaven to grow deep. Disturb us, Lord. Stare us, O Lord, to dare boldly to venture on wider seas where storm shall show the mastery, where losing sight of land, we shall find the stars. In the name of him who pushed back the horizons of our hopes and invited the brave to follow. We have taken this prayer of um, this Archbishop Desmond Tutu because it goes in accord with the topic that we are doing now, which is about religious life. Duke in Alto. To go to into the seas, not to stay by the shore. To go beyond what is already there. Prophecy and hope. And this is the life of a religious that we are living now what we will be later on. That's why we are not afraid to venture, to live, uh, to leave the, the traveled trail, to blaze new trails. There are two aspects in our mission as religious. One aspect is the way we live as religious. Our life itself is already a mission. The way we live as religious. And then the service that we offer. So every religious has a particular service, be it in education, be it in the parish, or be it in uh, social media, be it among the sick, there's a particular service that we offer. And in the particular service that, that we offer, we see the kind of work that we do. So what we do among the sick, among the poor, among the children, and how we do the work. Here comes our particular charism. There are many people who are working among the sick. But for the different congregations, they have a particular way of approaching the sick. There are many people who are having religious institutions. But how do we do our work of education? That will depend on the charism that has been passed on to us, which is also a fruit of the experiences of our founders and of our own brothers along the way. So the way we live as religious and the kind of service that we offer. Let us see the views of religious life coming from different voices. What should be a religious? From church history, religious life came from the fact, came into existence as a protest movement against a church that has conformed to society at large. It is meant to be a counter society within the church. In the beginning of our church history, the first 300 years, to be a Christian, to ask to be baptized, is to be ready for martyrdom. Christianity itself was a counterculture to the Roman society 
to the Greek society. But then later on, when uh, there is a toleration of Christianity, and not only a toleration, but an embrace of Christianity by uh, the Roman Empire, it became fashionable to become Christian. There was no longer any risk. In fact, there are advantages in being a Christian. So, there are uh, Christians who feel that um, they have to be challenged all the more. So this was the start of the Anchorite Cenobitic way of life. Saint Anthony of Egypt went to the desert. And many people set up monasteries outside of the civilized world at the time, in the swampy areas, to live a more challenging life, to be truer to the call of Christ. So it was a counterculture within a society that has become Christian. And in a way, <coughs> a mediocre way of living the Christian life. They want to become more radical. This was the start of uh, the uh, religious life in the church. Thomas Merton, a modern mystic, he wrote, the religious are called out of the world to live a life radically different from humanity at large. Thus are well positioned to see the present from God's point of view and to discern the signs of the times. Religious life is necessarily, necessarily a minority movement in the church. If you become majority, we will move towards the center of it and become mediocre. But precisely, it is different from the rest in order that we may see God's point of view and discern the signs of the times. That's why we constantly discern where God is calling us. There was a Congress of Religious Life in 1893. And among the many things they said, in the church, religious life forms a liminal group that is an alternative group separated by its lifestyle and ministry from the normal structures of society. A liminal group. What is a liminal group? The limen. Threshold. This is the door. And the... Uh, and, uh, so you are partly in, partly out. A liminal group. That's why we are different from the rest. And the problem is there's always the danger instead of uh, evangelizing the world, we are being absorbed in the world. We become part of the world. No more, we are no longer distinguishable from the rest. No longer by our habit, and no longer even by our attitude. The Latin American theologians, they wrote, religious life is a prophetic exaggeration of the fundamental call for every Christian to follow Christ in concrete situations today. There is no particular sacrament for religious life. <laughs> because our sacrament is baptism and confirmation. But lived in a radical way, somehow <clears throat> underlined, italized, put in bold letters, so that people, ordinary chances, uh, seeing us, will again be reminded of the call of Christ when they see a religious. So this is living the sacraments of baptism and confirmation fully in a radical way. Michael Alabados, an Indian theologian, religious are at the cutting edge of the church's mission to the world in so far as they symbolize in a specific visible way 
the radicalism of the kingdom of God which is being proclaimed. Edge, cutting edge of the church's mission. Nangunguna ka. No. Somehow, you trailblaze the proclamation of the kingdom. That's why the religious were the first ones to go to new missions like go to mission lands, like taking care of uh, um, the sick. They were the ones who put up the hospitals, like education, like educating the women, the street children, and maybe now attending to people with AIDS. So they go where people usually would not go. And then later on, the others followed. So right now, governments have their own hospitals, they have their own schools, they have their own youth centers. But before, it was done by the religious. Joan Chittister, Chittister, a religious writer. Religious life is to remind the world of what it can be, of what it must be, and what it most wants to be, deep down at its best, at its human core. Religious live at the edge of society. To critique it, we need a certain kind of distance in order to critique it. At the bottom of society, to comfort it, those who are at the bottom, and at the epicenter of society, to challenge it. St. John Paul II, in starting afresh from Christ, his letter to the religious, consecrated life should become the proclamation of an alternative way of living to that of the world and a dominant culture. The aim of consecrated life is conformity to the Lord Jesus in His total self-giving so that every consecrated person is called to assume His mind and His way of life, His way of thinking and of acting, of His being and of loving. That's why we, we, when we tend towards the center and disappear in the world, we lose our saltiness. We are no longer the salt of the earth. We give, we are just like the rest. We, we have lost giving taste to the world. Johannes Metz, a theologian, religious are to be a kind of shock therapy instituted by the Spirit for the Church as a whole against the dangerous accommodations and questionable compromises that the Church as a large-scale institution can always incline to. They press for the uncompromising nature of the Gospel and the imitation of Christ. In a sense, they are an institutionalized form of a dangerous memory within the church. We should shock the church and the Christians in general in order to move them away from a comfortable situation to challenge them all the more. That's why it's good to see our, our institutions like that. Is our community like that? Am I like that? Or I am just lost in a crowd to be like the others. Norbert Lofink, a biblical scholar, religions are God's therapy for the world. They are a life-giving force to challenge us not to identify with the worldly symbols of power, consumerism, and secularism. And our vows make us clear in a world that glorifies sex as if this is uh, what is so important, 
so much so that they can kill babies just to promote their freedom to do sex as they want. By our chastity, by our celibacy, we present to them, we can be happy without that. We can be fulfilled without that. The world that uh, glorifies the freedom of choice, freedom of con uh, that I want control over my body, I don't want to be a woman. They want to be a man. I can do that. Now we tell them there is obedience. Obedience to the laws of God. To an order higher than ourselves. And in a world in which money is so important, so pervading, we can tell them that we have voluntary poverty. We are poor, not because we are forced to be poor. We have taken it upon ourselves. Because it makes us happy. It makes us free. So these are concepts of religious life. The demand of the church for religious life. What are the basic functions of religious consecrated life in and for the church now? So let us try that we have heard different voices. If you want to summarize them, what could be the different functions? The first one is innovative function in the church and in society. They help the church move out of entrenched positions in spirituality and in the works of the mission. They trailblaze, sila yung na new works because they have the sensitivity and love of Jesus and they are in touch with the needs of the times. We are in touch with the peripheries. So we go and minister to those sectors of society that are not being paid attention to. And now many religious are in the field of ecology. Another field that uh, they were the religious who were, who were uh, the forerunners of ecology. When we don't speak about ecology in the 1990s, there were lone voices speaking about this already. So innovative function, because we are in touch with the demands of the gospel, because we are in touch with society and the needs of society, we are able to address these different needs. And I think your order had done this before, especially in your missionary life. In coming to such places as the Philippines, as Palawan, or in other cases, in order to minister to people who are far away, who are in the peripheries at the time. The task of evangelization, St. Frank, uh, Pope Francis said in Evangelical Audio, never closes itself off, never retreats into its own security, never opts for rigidity and defensiveness. It realizes that it has to grow in its own understanding of the gospel and in discerning the paths of the Spirit so that it always does what it good, whatever good it can. Even if, in the process, its use are soiled by the mud of the street. Because you are not walking on paved grounds, naturally, you get muddied, you get dirty. But if you move on paved grounds, everything should be all right. You don't get dirty at all. But because we trailblaze, then people can really think as weird. In the story of Don Bosco, he was taking care of the street children, playing with the street children, and his fellow priests were thinking him out of his mind. And they were even conniving in order to put him in a mental institution. Because it was unthinkable at the time for a priest to be playing with kids in the street. 
Now there are religious uh, women who go into bars and speak to the prostitutes. And it can be misunderstood many times. So they get soiled in the mud, so to speak. Second function, so one is innovative function, and then we have the corrective role or shock benefit. Corrective function to call attention of the church, of the people in general. There is a constant tendency of making the gospel livable in a consumer society, of being co-opted by the world. That's watering down its radicalism to the point that is that does not hurt anymore. Religious are to accept the so-called balanced view and move the church out of stagnated perspectives and positions in fresh viewpoints and situations. We have seen that just recently in Philippine history, when Duterte has been advocating killing of drug addicts. But where were, uh, where were the voices of religious to denounce this? Probably the bishops could not do that because somehow they put the whole church, the diocese at risk. But the religious could well do that. Speak against these tendencies. These abuses that are being done. This is part of the challenge of our times. Yes, there were individual religious who would do that. But as a body, we lack that voice. That is the danger for religious life. The most deadly temptation of religious life is to move too far into the middle ground where everything is nicely balanced and moderate, doing the role that society assigns to them. They have nicely integrated into society and are regarded as useful and are supported as long as they stay and do what they are supposed to do run schools, orphanages, hospitals, doing good, but not to rock the boat. As I've said, it's also the danger for holiness, mediocrity, just to stay in the middle. So Pope Francis wrote in Evangelic and Gaudete and Exultate, we can resist leaving behind a familiar and easy way of doing. Like the prophet Jonah, we are constantly tempted to flee to a safe Eden. So Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh. He escaped, you know, going to Tarshish. It can have many names, this kind of safe Eden, we can say like individualism, spiritualism, living in the little world, addiction, intransigence, the rejection of new ideas and approaches, dogmatism, nostalgia, pessimism, hiding behind rules and regulations. Supposedly, the roles for religious life, religious orders, are there to help them in their mission. But you know, as time moves on, the roles can be the, the rules can be hindrances to go out of the mission. Saint uh, uh, Saint uh, Sinyong uh, Negro na Saint sa Latin America. Martin de Porres, uh, religious. He was uh, very reprimanded when he was bringing in slaves into the convent to care for the slaves against religious life. Yeah. 
baka dapat magdadala ng mga kahit na mga may sakit dito. So, the rules can uh, really hinder us in going out no, to address concrete needs. Gaudete exultante. Unafraid of the fringes, Jesus himself became a fringe. So, we dare to go to the fringes we will find him there. Indeed, he is already there. Jesus is already there in the hearts of our brothers and sisters, in their wounded flesh, in their troubles, and in their profound desolation. He is already there in the periphery, in the fringes. <clears throat> And the Pope was speaking about existential fringes, existential peripheries, not so much territorial. Because in our case, maybe those uh, people selling flowers outside of our churches are already in the fringes, and we don't care for them. Those who are begging in front of our churches, he is in the fringes. So it's a shock therapy, making people realize we have to take care of this. And witness of community living. <coughs> this is another service that we offer, especially religious life, because we are not eremitical, living alone. No, we are living in communities. Religious communities are test cases of Christian communities. Their life of communion must be a clear sign that our Christian faith can create communities in which peace, justice, sharing, and love are not just empty words but live the realities. And we should not be afraid to speak about that. That here in this community, we are from different regions. We are Visayans, Ilongos, Ilocanos, Nicolanos, Tagalog, and we come to share together. And much more if there are also others from other countries. Whites, blacks, they can help one another. So this is our community life is already a witness to the people. And I think that's one of the strengths of your order. The community life. Another function of religious life is a clear message to all that Christ matters. Christ matters that I can stake my life for Him. That because of Him, I can make these important decisions in my life. So, Religious provide a clear reminder of the intimate link between being a Christian and following Christ. We need this because there are many Christless Christians around. The religious witness to give one's life for Christ and fill up a life, and Christ can fill up our lives and joyfully and meaningfully. Christless Christians. I realized that when I was in Palawan the first time in the parish of St. Ezekiel Moreno. That parish has been part of another parish in the East Coast. And it was separated from the East Coast of Marilon and become now a new parish in the West Coast. So being uh, a part of uh, another parish from the other side of the coast, it was visited only once a year, as in most cases, now by the priest. So there's a great need of evangelization. And I was alone then, without any help. But I noticed that people still want the, the sacraments. Kapag binyag, kapag kasal, nandiyan yan. So I made it a point that I will give catechesis before they receive the sacraments, but not just a 20-minute catechesis, 
But who are catechesis? Before they can become, uh, they can have their children baptized or they become nino or minang. I myself give the catechesis. No? And I give them a card so that they can uh, uh, fulfill that function for a year with, a, with that card. And I have given this catechesis, uh, maybe the, the first year I was giving the creed, the second year on the sacraments, and then the um, Ten Commandments. Before giving the catechesis, I would always tell them that this is only for Christians. Are you Christians? Yes. Because you cannot be a Nino or a Nina. You cannot bring your children to receive the sacraments if you are not Christians. Are you Christians? Yes. How do you know that you are Christians? Because we pray. Oh, the Muslims also pray. And pray more. Because um, we, we are generous. We have a lot of uh, uh, tourists here who are very generous. And they don't even believe in God. So they give a lot of reasons that they are Christians, but never only three, three or four times in the hundred times I gave the catechesis that somebody said, I am a Christian because I believe in Christ. And never have I heard anyone said, I am a Christian because I follow Christ. They tend to separate Christianity from Christ. They don't identify Christianity with Christ. That's in the, in the mind of ordinary people. Probably because we have not taught them the importance of Christ. Christless Christians. Now by our religious life, that's why we should not be afraid and ashamed to tell people, I am I'm a priest, I am a religious because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. Now, he determines my life. I have this way of life because of Him. Christian life should be, and you know this song in God's spell, God spell, day by day, three things I pray, that I may know you more clearly, that I may love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Can you want in Christian life? Know you more clearly, love you more dearly, follow you more clearly day by day. And we are a religious because of love. We love Jesus. Marami mga taong nalulungkot sa ordination, sa profession, hindi na siya mag-asawa, hindi na siya magmamahal. No, precisely we do that because we love. And we don't limit our love only to one woman. That's why to stake everything on charity. That's why we cannot be religious without charity, without doing good. That's an expression of the charity of our love for God. We cannot say that we love God and we don't take care of those who are in need. And uh, John Paul II wrote in Novo Millennium in Wente, the, mille the millennium will need to see to what length of dedication the Christian community can go in charity towards the poor. We must learn to see Christ especially in the faces of those with whom he himself wish to be identified. <coughs> and this is a concrete expression of our love for God. <coughs> the church measures her fidelity to Christ by her service to the poor, no less than by the orthodoxy of her doctrine. 
clearly the gospel reminds us that there is a special presence of Christ in the poor. And this requires the church to make a preferential option for them. Get preferential option for the poor. Church of the poor. Namumuna dapat ang religious chant. At sinabi ni uh, ni Pope Francis, I want the church, I want a poor church. And our religious life becomes more concrete kapag nakita na ang buhay natin ay mahirap. For centuries, people have stressed orthodoxy and wars have been fought because of orthodoxy among Christians, between Catholics and Protestants. But now, people are more sensitive not to orthodoxy but orthopraxis. They are attracted to people who do good, but do good in a proper way, not just gone out. And uh, the Pope, in Homo Millennium Inuente, has told us about the new creativity in charity. And again, the religious should be in the forefront here. The new creativity in charity. First, to get more funds as there is great tendency of donor fatigue. And we see that in the Philippines. We are able to build our big structures because of help from outside. But after 500 years of Christianity, we should no longer be depending on outside help. We can generate now our own resources with 83% of our people as Catholics. But we have not taught them to be generous because we were expecting from outside. But that is no longer the case now. The Philippines is now a median economy. And they want to make it an upper median economy. So the help is going to Africa. And now with the war in Ukraine, the, the focus of the church may now be in Ukraine. And besides, the old Catholic bastions are no longer that Catholic. So Europe have their own problems with their uh, church attendances. The Kirchen Steuer of Germany is going down. So in this time of uh, donor fatigue, we should be more creative in how to get resources. Especially creative on how to get local resources. In um, the CBCB, one year before the, the pandemic, we set up a new office in the CBCB, the newest office, the Office of the Spirituality of Stewardship, to promote stewardship in order to make people more generous in giving time, talent, and treasure to the church. We promote spirituality of stewardship in order to sustain the church of the poor. We have to sustain our church with our resources now. And that needs a lot of rethinking in our programs and in, in putting about this new spirituality. Creativity in charity, ensuring that they have given reach those in need and is really effective. That's why orthopractice, right practice. People would uh, tend to give to the church than to the government because they know that there is less corruption in the church than in the government. But there is still corruption. <laughs> Hopefully we can take out that corruption also. And to be more effective in our own work, Especially, it has been declared that the Philippines is the most, uh, is the country with having most um, uh, calamities, natural calamities. 
So naturally, help would come to us, like the time of Yolanda. But are we effective enough to give help to those who are really in need? That's also a great challenge of creativity in charity. And new creativity in charity, and this is really very important, that is Christian. Getting close to those who suffer so that the hand that helps is seen not as a humiliating hand out, but as a sharing between brothers and sisters. That they not only receive what we give, but they perceive love in the way we give. Love in the care of people who give to them. How to do that? That they feel the love of God, the love of others to them through the gifts given to them. Kaya kasama din dyan ang evangelization. That's why there is a great connection between charity and proclamation. Without the form of evangelization through charity and without the witness of Christian poverty, the proclamation of the gospel, which is in itself the prime form of charity, risks being misunderstood or submerged by the ocean of words of our days. The charity of works ensures the unmistakable efficacy of the charity of words. But the charity of words is already charity to proclaim that you are loved by God that you are special, that God cares for you. That's already charity. But then that kind of proclamation that God loves you, that God cares for you, is being completized by uh, the rice that we give, by the building materials that we give, when they are experiencing calamities. So, uh, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth wrote in Deus Caritas Est the distinctiveness of Christ's charitable activity. Of the Christian, the church's charitable activity. What are the essential elements of Christian and ecclesial charity? One element is the simple response to immediate needs and specific situations. Feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, caring for, for and healing the sick, visiting those in prison, done with professional competence and heartfelt concern. So one characteristic of a church charity, Christian charity, we attend to the immediate needs, but with competence and heartfelt concern. And there's already a whole technology how to help in times of calamities. We cannot just create that out of a good heart. But there's a technology how to make a proper report, how to assess, you know, how to give to those who are really in need. What an, uh, an, uh, another one independent of parties and ideologies. We don't help only to those who belong to us. And uh, in, uh, in Palawan, we experienced the ODET at nagkakaguro yung mga tao sa isang lugar namin doon. Naggalit sila sa social action namin. Kasi, ba't nabibigyan yung mga impression ni Cristo? Matabibigay niyo mga protestante. Dapat kami ang punahin. But according to the assessment of the social action, sila yung talagang tinamaan. So, yan. Andiyan pa yung mentality. Kung sila, ay Iglesia ni Cristo, sila sila na nagtutunungan, di ganun din tayo. No? Pero hindi yan ang karakteristik natin. So, the Christian's program, the program of the Good Samaritan, the program of Jesus, is a heart which sees 
Kaya nga, dumun sa maritan, hindi niya tinignan, niya tinanong, Budyo ka ba? Saan ka ba pupunta? Ano ba grupo mo? Nakita niya na yung need. A heart that sees. Whereas, the na, the priest and the Levite, they saw the man, but there was no compassion. Pinagbayaan na. Isa pang distinctiveness ng charity ng simbahan, charity cannot be used for engaging in proselytism. No? Iba ganon. No? O, scholarship. Magkatoliko ka. Iba yung katoliko siya, scholarship, magsimba ka. We are not proselytizing. Kasi katoliko ka, dapat ka magsimba. Pero kapag uh, iglesia ka, may scholarship, pero kailangan may katoliko, proselytizing na yun. Love is free. It is not practiced as a way of achieving other ends. But this does not mean that charitable activity must somehow leave God and Christ aside. Kaya magandang kapag tumutulong tayo, mahal ka ng Diyos. Ito may tulong na dumating. Mahal ka ng Diyos. Maraming taong nagmamahal sa iyo. Hindi ka nag-iisa. Kaya may tulong na dumating. But we also to take care of the personnel doing the church's charitable activity. And this is coming from Deus Caritas Est, paragraphs 33 to 39. Kasama tayo dyan, mga personnel, at tayo mga kasama natin sa pagtutulong. Charity workers should have a deep prayer life and be uninfluenced by party and ideology. The love of God urges us on. Hindi yung ipropromote ang iba pang uh, mga activities natin. Hindi tayo mga politicians na tumutulong lang sa kakampi nila. Ang nangyayari yan sa mga barangay natin. Natutulungan yung kakampi nila. They should be filled with humility with faith, hope, and love. So, yun yung kailangan ng karakteristik ng charity, uh, churches, the personnel carrying out the church's activities. Humility, faith, hope, and love. Magkasama-sama yun. Hope is practiced through the virtue of patience. At talagang kailangan ng patience sa pagturong sa mga may Kung wala ng patience, madali tayo ma-discourage. Kasi dahil sa mahihirap yan, kulang sa education. Rough ang kanilang character. No? Wala yung political uh, uh, political uh, um, way of doing things, of saying things. So, hope is practiced to the virtue of patience which continues to do good even in the face of apparent failures. And through the virtue of humility, which accepts God's mystery and trusts Him even at the times of darkness. Na tinulungan na nga, ayaw pang tulungan na kanilang sabi. Tinutulungan na nga, ayaw pang makiisa. Kumisa talagang magbabaw naman ang isip. They're just living for the moment. They don't see uh, ang consequences sa kanilang ginagawa. That's why we need patience and humility. And that's part of the virtue of hope. Faith tells us that God has given His Son for our sakes and gives us the victorious certainty that it is really true that God is love. And that's our message with the help that we give. God is love. It is thus, it thus transforms our impatience and our doubts into the sure hope that God holds the world in His hands and that in spite of all darkness, He ultimately triumphs in glory. 
when we are engaged in social issues, transformation of society, madaling pa discourage. Parang wala naman nangyayari. Parang wala naman effect ang ginagawa natin. But we believe that God is love, that God works, that He is Savior. He is the one who saves. In His time, lalabas din ang katotohanan. Magwawagi din ang mabuti. Faith gives rise to love. Love is the light and in the end, the only light that can always illumine a world grown dim and give us the courage needed to keep living and working. And in our times now, diyan nakikita ang religious life sa acts of love natin, which is the fruit of our faith, na nararamdaman ng mga tao. So we cannot uh, distance ourselves from these great needs of the world now. At sana we have this kind of sensitivity to see these needs. So the invitation of Pope Benedict, love is possible. And we are able to practice this because we are created in the image of God. That's why there is this great desire to love, to reach out to those who are in need. And to experience love and in this way to cause the light of God to enter into the world. This is the invitation I would like to extend with the present in situation. That we can experience love, that we can make people experience love. And this way, we are enlightened by the light of Christ. At hindi ba yan ang purpose of religious life? To bring the light of Christ in a world darkened by sin and doubt. Let us take a few moments of silence. Thank <laughs> you.